Bible says that my time starts when I get the mic, not when I read the scripture. And for the longest elder, I thought my time started when I read the scripture. But I, I, I do praise God, I do honor God for being God, for my apostle, for Mother Baker, for Elder uh, Millsap, amen. First Lady Millsap, amen. Thank God for the honorable Mayor uh, uh, Taylor and his lovely wife, amen, and their family with them. Thank God for all my elders, ministers, saints, and friends, everyone that takes me in the house of the Lord. It's truly an honor to see you in the house. If you don't mind, we're going to go to the word of the Lord so I do not hold you too long. I want to make sure you got time. If you do got to go stop by pick your baby to pick up something that you can. Amen? Amen. And thanks to all the August birthdays. I don't, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to have to sacrifice this month. Okay. God bless you. Amen. But you'll be receiving something soon. Amen. First Samuel 16 and 17. While, while you're standing, I do want to make sure I get this right. So keep that. That number was the 26, 705 or was it? I'm sorry. I got it on my phone. <laughs> I think it was 27. We want to make sure that we give you an update on what we're doing as far as, what was it, Shaquille? I'm sorry. 2706 for the second quarter. Somebody give God a praise. We are continually bringing down, trying our best to make sure that we are dead free in this house. Amen. We believe in God. The Bible said that we should owe no man but to love them. I heard a woman of God just speak yesterday. She said she don't believe in any dead. And she was about 20, what? No, 25. Just turned 25 years old. I believe that in this house too, amen? amen. The Bible said we should be the lender and not the borrower. The Bible said we should be the lender and not the borrower. Right. Amen. Let us preach in this house, amen. In verse 7, 16 and 17, it says, So Saul said to his servants, Provide for me a man who can play and bring him to me. Amen. Count it the YouTube story, amen. Who can bring, to, who can bring him to me. One of the young men answered, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing, a man of valor, uh, 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 a man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, yeah. and a man of good presence. And the Lord is with him. Now, I want you to see why they brought David in. They said, because I need somebody who is skillful in playing. And if you keep reading that, you will see that they said some other things about David. So today we're going to talk about going beyond gifted. Somebody say you got to go beyond being gifted. Let us pray in Jesus' name. If any man speak, let us speak of the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God given, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praised and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Beyond gifted. All right, so so I want to talk about gifts because you know we we we're in a charismatic move in the house of God where people believe in uh, the gifts and the callings and everything of God, and so therefore sometimes we get caught up in gifts that we forget that we must be more than just gifted. Now I preached you guys before about that 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 we have to go beyond that. So I want to examine the nature of gifts. I want to examine the nature of gifts, and so if you want to write them down, I'm going to try my best to speak slowly so you can write them down if you want to. But the scripture will be on the board. Why does God give gifts to men? Have we ever asked ourselves that question? Why does God gift people? Why does God give certain people certain gifts in the house of the Lord? And even if you're not in the house of the Lord, because we know the gifts and callings of God are without repentance, that they are irrevocable. And two things that means that means if you're not going to use it the right way, God will not take it away from you. Y'all better hear me. When we say, well, you know, that person uh, uh, lost the ability to sing because they were singing that they're not in the church before the world. But sometimes they lose the ability to sing because they're not taking care of themselves. Y'all better hear me, you know, that they're, they're, they're doing things in their vocal cords they should not be doing. And, and because of that, what happens is you lose that gift in that way. It wasn't that God took it from you. It says that you can mess some things up on your own. But if it's a gift, y'all better hear me in this house, that means that God is not going to take it back if you don't use it the right way. If you give your child a car, if you give them a car, and then you tell them it's your car, you can't take it when they decide to go somewhere they shouldn't go in their car. Oh, it got quiet because y'all say, no, nah, Pastor, I, I can take it back. If it's a gift, you can't take it back. It got real quiet inside of here. It, it, that's not how a gift works. Now, if you have conditional releasing something to somebody, then therefore you have the right to say, if you don't do this, then I'm going to take it back from you. But if it's a gift, it's mine. Amen. I can do what I want to with it. Amen? I, I, I can do what I want to because it is my gift. And y'all get mad at me if y'all want to. Y'all better thank God that salvation was a gift. 
Because salvation was a gift. God does not take it away from you when you act crazy. Y'all better hear me. He, he gives you a way to stay in relationship. We, God does not walk away from us. We walk away from God. God says, I didn't go anywhere. I, didn't, I never took my, my relationship away from you. I never took my salvation away from you. It was you that decided that you want to walk away from me. And so now I say, why does God give gifts to men? The first reason is, the first reason is to manifest his presence in the body of Christ on earth. That we have the body of Christ here. And he says, I want to manifest myself, my presence on earth. In 1 Corinthians 12 and 7, it says, to each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. And so we have the spirit of God. It does not matter if you have it if nobody knows it. If it does not benefit anybody. You have to make sure that whatever God is doing, God says, I'm giving you the manifestation. So if I'm able to preach, it's because God gave me his spirit. If you're able to minister, it's because God gave you his spirit. If you're able to serve, it's because God gave you his spirit. And your service, your preaching, your singing, your, 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 your work in the, in the body of Christ, that is only a manifestation that God's spirit is inside of you. See, I don't care if you tell me I have the Holy Ghost if I never see it. I don't care if you tell me I, I, I have the spirit of God inside of me, but I never see it manifested anywhere. Oh, I'm just being real. God said, no, no, I gave you that because I wanted to have my spirit there. And see what it says? It is for the common good. The gift should benefit the people. It's not just there to benefit you. It is not there so you can be this great prayer warrior, but you pray only for yourself. Y'all better get me. It is not there so you can be a prophet, so only you can get inside somebody's business. That is not what the, the, the gift is there. The gift is there to benefit somebody else. It also, it reminds us of our dependence upon one another. It reminds us that we need one another. This is what the church messes up. Because the church, we are very individualistic. We see things as God is my personal savior. I know what you mean when you say that, but he's not my personal savior. He saved more than just me. He's our savior. Jesus told them that when you begin to pray, he said, don't pray and say my father. Don't pray and say my daddy. He said, you need to pray and say our father. Meaning that when I go to God, I cannot begin to uh, exclude Elder, to Elder Thomas because I don't like him right now. And, and, and Lord, it, it's me and then you my father, so I need you to go get him because even though he, you, you're, he's still saved and, and he's still a part of the body, I don't like him right now. And so therefore, it's my father. But the truth is, God said, when you pray, I want you to say our father. Then I want you to not just talk to me and forget about him. Amen. Sorry, you just sit to my right. You know how it is. Amen. And we, we do the same thing. Amen. Romans 12 and 5 says, so we though are many, are one body. Someone say one body. one body. One body in Christ and individually members one of another. That means I'm connected to you. That, that, that if I'm in a body, I cannot say, well, I'm a finger, but I'm not part of the body. I cannot take my connection away from the hand. I have to take my connection away from the arm because I said, well, no, no, I said, no, no, we are individually members one of another, having gifts that differ. See that? That's right. We don't all have the same gifts. Amen. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. Now, now, this is what God is saying. He said that we are many members, but we are one body. But the reason why I gave each of uh, you guys gifts is so that you can benefit each other and realize I need somebody else. Y'all better hear me when I preach this. I said this since Sunday morning. I may be the pastor of this church, but there are some things in my spiritual walk that I don't do as well as you. Amen. There are some things I do better than you, and there are some things that I don't do as well as you. And I don't say that as though I, I, I say, well, Lord, but this is terrible. No, no, God says I created you that way, that we are fitly joined, that there's a piece of me that needs you, and a piece of you that needs me. Y'all better hear me. And so therefore, if I'm not very good at, at, at fasting, the sins can fast for three days and three nights. Y'all better hear me when I say this. And I say, Lord, I struggle with 12 hours. I, 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 I'm struggling with this fasting 12 hours. It is not for me to begin to be jealous of Elder Sims. It is for me to go to Elder Sims and say, can you help me? Give me some principles. How do you fast that way? Because I know that God put you in my vicinity to make me better. And so whatever gift that you have, it is there to help me as well. And, and, and if I can study the scriptures and, and know things 
things in the Greek and the Aramaic and the Hebrew, and we thank God for all those things. But if I'm good at that, it is not for me to look down on my other brother and say, well, you don't even understand the King James. No, 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 that's not what God is saying. God says, I'm there also to help you out. Because I am sharper than I am. And one man, y'all believe in me, we make each other better, don't we? And so that's what God says. He says, because we, we're looking for unity, not uniformity. I don't need everybody in the church to be alike. Everybody say, I want everybody to look the same and act the same and be the same. That is not what God called. We're looking for unity. We're looking for unity. I need the heart to be in unity with the lungs. I need the lung to be in unity with the bladder. I need the bladder to be in unity with the liver. If we all did the same thing, y'all better hear me when I preach this, then we would not be a good living body. But because we are an organism, God said we are a body. An organism has many parts and they are very different, but they work for one goal. We're not looking for units or uniformity. We are looking for unity. Third thing, I'm going to move on. To edify or to build the church individually and corporately. See, you can't build the church and then neglect somebody who's sitting beside you. You know, I, I can't build the church and say, well, I'm not going to build the person that's sitting beside me. In 1 Corinthians 14 and 12, it says, so with yourselves, since you are eager for manifestation. You know how we are, right? Use me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Use me, God. And so, since you're so eager for manifestation of the Spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. So I'm not trying to become a prayer warrior so you can look at me and say, you better honor Elder Baker because he can get a prayer through. I'm not trying to prophesy so you can say, you know what, Elder Baker, when he sees the thing, it comes to pass and it's accurate and you better give him your offering. I'm not doing that. I'm not eager for manifestation to build up myself. I am eager for manifestation of the spirit so I can build up the body, build up the church. Whatever you do, if it does not help the body, it is useless. If it only helps you in your house, baby, it's useless. Whatever gift God gave you, it should help the body. If it helps nobody else, I don't even know if it even came from God in that way. Are you using it for God the right way? You gotta make sure that whatever I'm doing, whatever manifestation of the spirit, however God uses me, it's gotta help somebody. I don't care about people saying I'm a wonder in time. God is elevating me. I see things that y'all don't see. I hear things that y'all don't hear. I can discern people before they come to me. If it's not helping anybody with you, I don't care. Y'all about one or two claps. Y'all get mad. Y'all know we get charismatic. We want to be so holy and spiritual. I don't care if you see stuff I don't see. If it's only helping you. Feed into negativity. Right. Yeah. 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 Just being real. Yeah. 
you don't have to feed into negativity because if you're really strong, that's a, that's that's lower thing. That that's lower callings right there. Yeah. We we are reaching for the mark of the prize of the high call. And in the church, if we're reaching for the mark of the prize of the high call, that means that there must be lower callings. Yeah. There must be some low hanging fruit that ch the children of God are reaching out for. Yeah. Mm. Somebody say, God, take me higher. Last thing, the fourth thing is to glorify God. To glorify God. That, that, that's what we do. Matthew 5 and 16 says, in the same way, let your light shine before others or before men. I'm in the English Standard Version. So that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So whatever I'm doing, yes, I'm doing the work, but the glory goes to God. Yes, I may do the service, but the glory goes to God. And everything I say, it had to be for the glory of God. See, this is what I like about good people of God because they say, pastors, when you give them a sermon, you tell them, hey, you did a great sermon, and you did a great job, and we have to say, well, all glory goes to God. Let me tell you something, that's for you too. Amen. Oh, yeah, quiet in the house. That when you do something and people say, great job, say, no, all glory goes to God. When, when, when you do something and, and, and help someone, they say, well, you know, uh, you God, do the great, great thing that you've done, you got to also say, no, no, all glory goes to God because I only let my light shine so people can see my good works, but I want you not to glorify me. I need you to glorify God because it, had it not been for the Lord on my side, had it not been for God, I would not be able to do this. I, there would not be a manifestation in my life of the Spirit of God. It is only the Spirit of God working through me. Everything we do is for the glory of God. We are to allow our lights uh, to shine by using our gifts to do good works. And as a result, they glorify the God that gifted us. Now, let me get to David real quick because David was gifted and his gifts brought him into the past. He yeah. said, God said, look, you know, he put his evil spirit upon Saul. He had a purpose for it. He had a purpose for it. But then he says, you know, I'm going to bring in David. He said, I need to find somebody because music, I told y'all that before, music begins to shift atmospheres. Yeah. People say, why do we have musicians? Why do we give our musicians? Because I told you before that when prophets prophesy, the Bible says the minstrels play. It sets a certain atmosphere, a certain mood for things to happen. And so therefore, that spirit that was inside of Saul, they couldn't preach it out. The spirit that was inside of Saul, he couldn't shout it out. God said, no, I need you to find somebody that can play under the anointing of God that is going to be able to play and shift the spirit out of you. And this would happen with David. And it was David's gift that brought him to the palace. It was David's gift that got him noticed and called before Saul. And whatever God gave you is sufficient to get you into any room, hear me, that he wants you to be in. I will say it again. Whatever God gave you is sufficient to get you in any room that he wants you to be in. He said that David was out there. He was singing the sheep. He was singing to the, the, to the sheep. He was a shepherd. But God said, now nah, I got a man who was singing the sheep. I'm going to bring you before the king. And it was not the fact that David had a good Facebook presence. Y'all better hear me. Uh, David was so good. And God said, I called you because I saw what you can do. And I need you to be in the palace. I need you to get in the room. Now, you're not going to be king right off. But I need you to be around the king. I need you to see what kind of king I don't want you to be. Y'all better hear me inside. Look here. Because sometimes we say, Lord, why you put me here? Why you put me under this person? God says, I want you to be the boss. But I first need you to see what kind of boss I don't want you to be. And sometimes we get mad at God and we say, Lord, I don't want to be here. But sometimes it is temporary. And God says, no, I got to put you in the room so you can know how to act when it's your turn. I've said it before and I'll say it again. My, 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 my president, I don't know if she's watching this, but my president on Monday, she did, she had weird complications. She spoke a word into me. I love it. She said, y'all wonder why I'm always on these boards and I'm going before Congress and, and doing this. She said, because I want a seat at the table. Yeah, yeah. She said, if you don't have a seat at the table, you might be on the menu. Oh, you, you better hear me. This is why I tell people, you better get active in things. Because if you don't have a seat at the table, you might be on the menu. And so God says, no, I need David. Before you become the king, before you begin to rule and take over my people, I need you to first have a seat at the table. I need you to watch some things. I need you to be groomed. And David was not only gifted, I'm going to preach this in a minute, but he was skillful. Uh, he was skillful. He took what God gave him and shifted it to a level of excellence by working at it so that he could do it skillfully. Just because you are called to do it don't mean that you do it skillfully. There are some people inside of here, you are gifted. It does not mean you are skillful. And 
to be skillful, you have got to be trained. You have got to be humbled. You have got to be disciplined. And we want to be skilled, but we don't want discipline. We want to be skilled, we want, we, but we don't want to work hard. And God says, I know that you're gifted, but baby, anybody who's gifted, they're not always skilled. Raw talent is raw talent. I've seen plenty of people who go on America Got Talent, who goes on a, 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 The Voice, and, 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 and goes on American Idol, and then they say, you know, you can really sing, but you're not ready yet. You don't know how to really hit those runs. I know you can hit them, but, but you're not skillful yet. And he said, no, I need you to go back and work on it. And they come back the next year, and now they got some vocal lessons. And yeah, they were already gifted. They could already sing. They could sing before us, and we were shouting. You know, certain people, we're real nice. Y'all make me think I can sing every now and then. Uh, but we're real nice inside of here. But when I go before the nations, I got to be skillful. I got to be more than just gifted. This is why in the house of God, sometimes you say, Pastor, why don't you use that person? Why don't you use that person? They're gifted, but maybe they ain't skilled yet. They're not disciplined yet. They're, they're, they're not had the right uh, work upon them. And the level of skill, it separates the chosen from the called. For many are called, but few are chosen. It's the level of skill. How well do you do what you do? Anybody can do things, but you do it the right way. I thank God for, for when we have uh, 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 programs, we got to have somebody out there to greet people at the door to make sure they come in, have somebody to park cars. Anybody can park cars, but some people do it skillfully. Anybody can take care of the man of God when they come in the house of God. Some people do it skillfully. Oh, y'all better hear me when I say this. And sometimes that's why we're not what we should be. is because we are gifted, but we're not skillful. Let me move on. We should all seek to use our gift in the most effective and the most skillful way. That way we become a benefit to the kingdom. But guess what? David was beyond gifted. Four things, and I'm getting out your way. Real quickly, you must go beyond gifted. Somebody said beyond gifted. The Bible talks about David and he says that, you know, he's skillful in playing, but he said also he's a man of battle yeah. and a man of war. Yeah. You see, we got to be a courageous warrior. I want to tell you something. It is pointless to be gifted, but do not have the courage to do what you got to do. Yeah. Yeah. Don't matter if you can fight or you won't fight. Don't matter if you can. That's theory. Then there's practice. And sometimes it takes a lot of courage to go from theory to practice. Yes, it does. No, no, no. I'm just, you know, we got some people who've been in the military, you know, been in the army. They showed us how to shoot, showed us how to do certain things. But to go out there and actually do it, it takes some courage. Yeah. I was a bitch to train with someone who got in the foxhole and he had been in ROTC, knew how to uh, drill and knew how to march and do all these things. They made him a squad leader and everything. And I was hearing some things from back when I was on a detail that morning. Uh, and, and, and it was, I heard, I said, you know, so-and-so, they said, he, he about to get kicked out. He about to go home. I said, what happened? He said, he got inside the foxhole, and he freaked out. Yeah. He got scared. The shots began to scare him, and he didn't want to shoot. And he was skilled in what he did. He could break down the M16, could clean it, roll with a blindfold on. I mean, he was good at what he could do, but there was a level of fear inside of him yeah. that would not allow him to do what needed to be done. I'm preaching to some of y'all. I'm going to get quiet. It is not enough to know what decision you should make, but not have the courage to make the decision. That's why I learned sometimes I don't just spend my time talking to people all day. Because I know you know the decision. You can sit there and let somebody talk and say, you know, that's your answer right there. They know the answer. Do you have the courage to do it, though? Oh, wow. Then my father said, hello, laws. Daddy was still saying, hello, rats and roaches. <laughs> I pray we don't have any of those in here. We're doing a good job with this termination. Amen. But, but hello, Walls. First Chronicles 28 and 20. This is David talking to his son. Talking to Solomon. He said, David also said to Solomon, his son, he said, be strong and courageous and do the work. Somebody say, do the work. Somebody say, do the work. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the lack of, for the Lord God, my God, is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you until all the work. Somebody say, the work. For the service of the temple, the Lord is finished. It does not matter how gifted you are. Nothing gets done if you are not uh, too afraid to step out and do the work. 
Thinking about it is one thing. Praying on it is one thing. Being inside this altar when I lay hands on you and tell you what God has sent you to do, maybe that's one thing. Fasting for three nights and for three days, that is one thing. But if you guys say, Lord, after I know what to do, stir up my spirit, or begin to work on me on the inside, so I have the courage to make the decision to do the work, because nothing gets done if people don't work. I'm preaching this inside of here. Tough only brings poverty, but all hard work brings a profit. That is Proverbs right there. You have got to do the work. The Bible says that he shall be like a tree planted by the roots of water, and whatsoever he does, what he doeth shall prosper. Not what you're thinking about, not what you're praying for. Whatever you do shall prosper. Sometimes, sometimes while you pray, begin to shift your prayers. Lord, I know what to do. Begin to edify me. I know what to do. Begin to build me up so I can go out and fight the battle. Because I do not want to have the skill, have the ability, but not have the courage to do what I got to do. Yeah. Can I preach to five people and I tell you that's the only thing that's stopping you right now in your yeah. life? Yeah. God says, I'm here. I got your back. Yeah. You just scared. Yeah. You just scared. That's all it is. Stop, stop, stop telling people I'm waiting on the Lord. God said, no, you ain't waiting on me. I'm right here. I got you back. As soon as you swing, I'm jumping in. Who had friends like that back in the day? I, I, you know, I, I was a small one. I had a cousin like that. I said, look, man, as soon as you swing, I'm jumping in. It's nothing. But I need you to swing. Because if you won't swing that one right there, then I know when I can do something myself, then you're not going to begin to step up for me. God says, I need to give you the victory. Y'all better hear me. I'm going to give you the victory. I'm going to get the glory, but I want you to have the victory. I'm going to preach this. I'm going to move on. Do you know when the people of God went into the, the, the land, the promised land, the Bible says he kept certain nations. He didn't destroy all of them. He said, because I want y'all to remember how to fight. He said, yeah, I can do this. When I brought you out of Egypt, see, y'all weren't ready to fight Pharaoh yet. Y'all were too scared. So I let Pharaoh get inside of the Red Sea, and I destroyed him. Because I promise you, the enemy that you see today, you will see now no more forever. I promise you that. He said, but when you go into this land, I'm not going to just give you everything. I guarantee he told Joshua, you will never lose a battle. You will never lose a man. He told Joshua that. And so when you go into the kingdom, into the, into the, the, the promised land, he said, I've got some people there. They can fight. But whoever you stand against, you will bring down. I didn't need you to go out there and go to the fight. For the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. I just got to fight it. You thought, well, the battle is God. I ain't got to fight. No, no. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. But you still got to fight. You still got to be courageous enough to go out there and go do what you need to do. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Be wise with your words. The Bible says that David was prudent in speech. Yeah. Prudent means wise. See, David was in the presence of a king that was mentally disturbed. He was off. He was off and he was dangerous. Y'all better hear me. Saul was dangerous. David was built inside of a palace with a king who was mentally disturbed. And he had to be wise with his words for his survival. You just can't say anything. You can't just do what you want to do. And sometimes as people of God, we want to say everything. That's just me. I tell y'all we got to stop saying that's just me and start saying I got to work on that. Stop just saying that's just the way I am. We didn't normalize. No, I got to work on that. Yes. Yes. I'm going to get mad at y'all. Yes. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. We, 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 we are in a world where people will tear you down for a bad choice of words. It's, it's simply what you said, and now it changes everything. And we get mad, but you know, you got to be prudent with your words. It'd be wise. I, 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 you know, I had a chance to read Barack Obama's book, and one thing about Barack Obama, if y'all know, is he talks very slow, and his, his kids were like, "Daddy talks so slow." That's what he wrote about his kids talking about him, and he understood that when I say something, people are trying to catch me up. So I'm not gonna make you make me say something I don't want to say. So I gotta be slow with my words. We said from before, you gotta be slow to speak, but quick to hear. And so Barack Obama was, was, was very careful about how he said things. And therefore, we must be wise and prudent in our speech. In James 1 and 26, for religious people inside of here, if anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his heart, this person 
religion is worthless. Pastor, I've been saved 30 years. I was saved before you were born. I've been in this thing. Change your life. I know the Lord. He heard my cry. Amen. But say some of the craziest things. We'll say anything. We'll, we'll, we'll begin to hurt people who are new saints. Yeah. Yeah. I always stand in tune with somebody. I always say something crazy. If you got religion, if you so religious, but you came out of your tongue, he said that is worthless. We are in transforming lives ministries. I told y'all before, everybody who come in here is welcome. Nobody should be comfortable. Nobody should be comfortable. Because if you got together, you need to make sure that you need to go and re-examine yourself because you really need some things fixed inside of your life. We are being transformed by the renewing of our mind. I don't want to be a religious person, but will say anything. A religion that does not convict you to watch what you say, it has no value at all. The first thing God has to do is control your tongue. Control what you say. Because we live and die by what we say. We make mentalities by what we say. Our thoughts are in here, but when we begin to say a thing, it becomes it goes forth. We talk about I'm gonna speak it, I'm gonna declare it, and we talk about that with God. But sometimes we have spoken and declared things for our own good, our own evil. Sometimes we spoke it and we have declared it for our own evil and not for our good. Power of life and death and what? Transformation is the result of a renewed mind because the, the mind produces the thoughts that we speak. Yeah. Everything out of the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yeah. I didn't mean to say that. No, you didn't mean for it to come out. Am I being real in this house? No, I didn't mean for it to come out. I didn't want to say that. That's why it's important for God to transform this. Because that way the thoughts would not dwell in my mind too long anyway. Oh, I'm preaching inside of here. Sometimes you can have it in your mind for too long. You dwell on it too long. When you get angry, things come out of you. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's why I say, Lord, before it becomes a problem, let me pray now. Let me be on the altar now. Lord, why is a thought in my mind? And I preach this before, and some of y'all didn't like when I said it, but it's okay. You got to start saying, Lord, I got a problem with so-and-so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stop lying. You know your heart anyway. Stop lying. I don't like so-and-so. It ain't right. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't lie to yourself. I don't like this person. And I cannot effectively love this person if I don't particularly like them. So, Lord, I need you to work on me. And make sure that I can see them the way you see them. Because though I don't like them, you chose to create them. And you love them. Y'all better hear me. You have a desire for their life. So, Lord, I need you to work on me before I say something that I don't want to say. Let me preach this thing. Too often we talk ourselves out of a blessing. We talk ourselves out of a new level. In Proverbs uh, 13 to 3, it says, He who guards his mouth protects his life. But the one who opens his lips invites his own ruin. We blame everybody about what we said. You shouldn't have said it. Shouldn't have said it. And we blame everybody else on the know. They would not have known what you thought until you said it. For even a fool to consider wise when he keeps his mouth closed. That's, right. That's Proverbs 2, right? That's Proverbs as well. So, so our words are too consequential for us not to use them wisely. You have to care about how you look. Now this was interesting because it said that they was a man of good presence. You got to care about how you look physically and spiritually. Yeah. I say, Pastor, talking about this. Too often as Christians, we forget that if our God is so good, and he's so good to us, we are sitting in a world of mixed signal if we, by looking so bad. Yes. 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 Yes, sir. You want to hear that one? Mm -hmm. I want to follow your God, but you always look terrible. Yes. Always sad. Always busted and disgusted. Yes. Always got a frown on your face. But you telling me the joy of the Lord is your strength? You telling me that God will give you peace? You telling me that God has been good to you? If he's been good to you, what do you do with his enemies? Am I being real in this house? It costs you nothing to smile. It costs you nothing to have a good countenance. The Bible says David was a good looking man, not just about his presence, how he physically looked, but about how he carried himself. You're not gonna tell me somebody who 
wrote Psalm 23 will not have a smile on his face? You're not going to tell me somebody who shouted to a point in death before God to his clothes fell off is not going to have a smile on his face? He carried himself in a way that people knew that his God would be somebody. Yeah. I've learned something. I've gone through times where I feel a little down. I feel a little discouraged by stuff. And, and I've gone through. You know what I've learned to do? The next morning, I pick out my best outfit. I pick out my best outfit. Go to the barber shop, get a good haircut. Because if I don't feel good, I'm gonna look good. You don't want to hear that inside here. If I don't feel good, I'm gonna at least look good. Because when I step out of the house, I'm not just representing Daniel. God don't hear me. I am representing my church, and I'm also representing my God. And I gotta make sure I'm around people who don't believe in my God that even if I go through, baby, I still look good. I don't look like what I'm going through. I don't look like what's happening inside of my life. That's the kind of God that I serve, that I can have peace in the middle of a storm. I serve a God that will sleep at the bottom of a boat when the storm was going on, so I can at least go to work the next day and be sharp. Y'all better hear me inside of it. If I don't want to serve your God, you look crazy. I'm just being real. I don't want to serve no God. You look, you look bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was young, I, I was my, 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 my oldest, and you know, I was young. He was a little baby, and when I went with my dad, and we were going to get some wood cut, and he would get some trees harvested and everything. And this young, this, uh, this man, he, he said something. He told me about my son. He said he looks well looks to. I know what he meant by that. I'm not that old. I know what he meant. He said he looks well looks to. And I said, Dad, what does he mean? Daddy said he means that he looks like he been looked out the way. So, so he looked at my son and said, you've been taking care of that son. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, when somebody see me when I walk out, God's going to hear me. I want them to say he's been well looks to. <laughs> that his God takes care of him. His God been blessing him. He may be going through some things in his life right now, but his God is taking care of him. You may not know all I'm going through. You may not know my troubles and my trials. But when I walk out, I'm going to make sure you know I'm a child of the king. I'm a peculiar Tree that's planted by the rivers of water. My leaves 
people not well. So y'all better hear me. I'm going to give my fruit before it's time. God take care of me. I, I, I had my Bible to come to church. Y'all know, know my Bible. I had my Bible to come to church. I always come and say, look, I got to look good, man. I represent God. I represent God. I, I, I have to look good. I represent God. Now, you can get mad and say, Pastor, you just vain. You just vain. No, 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 no. I, 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 I brag on my God. I, I, I have a good God. I want to make sure people know that, 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 that when you serve God, there are benefits to those things. That's why we don't bring the children over now. You don't want to hear that. That's why we don't hear you bring children over because we get saved and give up. And don't care. No, I'm going to look good spiritually. I'm going to look good physically. Yeah, man, you want to. Make sure that God is with you. My last point. God is only obligated to his word. And he is with those that seek to obey his will for their lives. The Bible says lastly that the Lord is with him. They said make sure you know he can play. He can fight. He looks good. He talks well. But God is with this man. Yes, that is how we make sure that God is with you. Never go anywhere or do anything unless God is with you and there are requirements for his presence. Look in 2 Corinthians 2 and 31, 13 and 11. 2 Corinthians 13 and 11. Finally, brothers, rejoice. Aim for restoration. Y'all believe when I say this? He says, one, make sure you're a person who praises God. Because people who praise God, God is with them. The Bible says he dwells in the presence uh, in the praises of his people. So therefore, if you're a praiser, God comes down and visits you. But also he says, aim for restoration. That when I see somebody who is not doing what should be doing, I'm not aiming to condemn them. I'm aiming for restoration. I'm not aiming to send them out. I'm aiming for restoration. If you're somebody who want to convict and condemn people, this is not the place for you. You got to aim for restoration. The devil only gets glory when people are condemned. The God said he did not come to condemn the world, but he came to save the world. And so we aim for restoration. It says comfort one another. When you are somebody who look at somebody and say, Lord, I need to comfort that person. I don't have to know everything that's going on inside your life. I don't have to know all the details of what happened. I just want to be there and comfort you. And when you agree with one another, be a person who's not disagreeable all the time. You can disagree, but don't be disagreeable. I'm going to preach this thing. When you live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. When you have that kind of mind, that's when God walks with you. I don't care how good you speak in tongues. You can speak a whole book in tongues. That's fine. But I want to make sure, do you aim for restoration? Do you comfort people? I don't care if you can prophesy my name and tell me what my address is. Oh, witches can do that. Warlock can do that. But can you begin to say, Lord, I want to be a person who lives in peace. I want to be a person who comforts people. I don't care how good you can shout, how good you can dance. It does not matter. But if you don't have these qualities, baby, God is not with you. I want to make sure that if I'm talented, if I'm gifted, that God is with me. But there are people out there right now who are talented, they are gifted, they can speak, they can sing, they can shout, they can prophesy, but God is not with them. I'll preach it for you real quick. He said, Lord, did I not prophesy in your name? Did I not do miracles in your name? He said, depart from me, for I never knew you. You are a worker of iniquity. Lord, when I preach, let me be, let you be with me. When I go to work in the morning,
finish you, that means he equipped you. That whatever you need, you already got it. So I know if God said go, baby, I'm already victorious. But the battle is not mine. It's already the Lord's. And I thank God that his presence is with me. David could be skilled and still get killed. He could be a person that all the fight and still get killed. Why are you afraid? Either you believe in God or you don't. 